Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. Welcome to another edition of Scruffy Savage Finance. A little scruffy today. We're going to talk about why you should not be buying luxury cars on an average income. And this is going to be a little preachy. It's going to be a little in your business because this is something that you should know that by continuing to buy new cars and continuing to finance new cars, eliminate or delay your retirement by 20 years. Here's what happens. You buy a new car and the new car depreciates. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is go to the front of the channel and begin to watch the older videos up to now so you can get your financial literacy that you need to win and compete in today's world. Do that. That's why I constructed this channel like that. And that's why I went ahead with the foundational financial education first. And this video is part of that foundational education. Many people buy cars based upon can they afford the payment with little regard of the financial repercussions that will happen for years. Let me give you an example. One of the favorite cars on the road right now is the Dodge Hellcat which is a 70 to $108,000 car. And you have many people who are literally breaking their necks to get this car. And you'll have some guy who lives at home with his mom and dad, who has a Hellcat in an 800 to $1,500 per month car payment. And I know you're going, but Glendon, what does it matter if he likes the car, he can afford it, he's happy? Here's the problem with that. The economic damage that this person is doing is cataclysmic. Car loans are front loaded interest loans. Now, what does that mean? That you're going to pay the interest on the loan before you start paying on the principal of the loan, which ultimately pays the car off. So your first few years of a car payment are mostly 90% interest. And this is where the game gets wicked. So you go out and you buy yourself a luxury car. You make $50,000 a year. You get you a luxury car. Your payment is 800 to 900 bucks per month. Well, I'm going to share something with you that I experienced when I had my first car. I only financed two cars in my life. And I remember I was in the military and I didn't buy a luxury car. I just bought a car and I financed it. And I went from a position of always having money to it started to get a little tight because I had the car payment, I had the car insurance, I had the gas and the maintenance. And literally back way back when, when I was an E4 in the military, and I think I was bringing home 1100 bucks per month. And my car payment was like 289. My insurance was 200 and then gas. So my car represented half of my disposable cash. And I was just, cause I mean, I instantly started to feel it. Cause once I paid the car payment, I was just like, I just don't have as much money as I used to. And this is uh, something that will be compounded several times over if you buy a luxury car. So let's go ahead and say you make $50,000 a year and you go out and get yourself a nice Mercedes, a nice BMW, your payment is 800 to 900 something bucks, maybe even a thousand dollars per month. That car payment represents 20 to 30% of your income. Here's where it gets very, very bad. That car is depreciating the minute you drive it off the lot. What is depreciation? the car is becoming less valuable. So essentially, I will tell you the story. I have not one, but two luxury vehicles. And I bought my first luxury vehicle when I started making big money. I had regular cars before I started making big money. Do not get into the rim of buying luxury vehicles before you make money. Cause I'm gonna tell you, I have a BMW X5M the tires 
on that car are like 2,500 bucks for a set of four. The brake job was 15, 2,000 for the front and 1,500 for the rear. I have an Audi S4. I mean, I can just go on and on and on that you're gonna have significant issues with just regular maintenance on a luxury vehicle. And I'm also, be sure to watch this video from the beginning to the end because I'm going to teach you how to offset that loss because it is a real and valid loss buying luxury cars when you don't have a luxury income. When you go ahead and get these luxury cars, just the typical maintenance is going to be extraordinarily expensive. Uh, recently, my car, my BMW is a 2012. I've had it for a while. Um, recently, I had to have some none, you know, after the warranty expired, go, go figure. I had to have some work done on it and it was 4,500 bucks. And I went to my private dealer and my private mechanic and he said that there was some warranty issues and some recalls and to take it to the dealership because they were talking about 9000 and the dealership got me out of there for 4500 So my mechanic was honest and he helped me out. Just typically, and I don't really drive my vehicles a lot because I don't really do, I don't commute, I work from home. So I'm not really putting a lot of miles per year on my cars. And just, you know, this year, the last two years, they've been relatively cheap because I don't put a lot of miles on them, so I don't have a lot of maintenance cost. However, the X5 was $108,000 when it was new, and the Audi was $55,000 when it was new. So that's $170,000. Today, I could probably get 30, for the X5 and maybe nine. So essentially $140,000 in value has just literally gone down the drain. And I'm cool with that because I prepare for that because on the other side, and this is the way you play the game. If you're a regular person with a regular income, do not buy a luxury car. And let alone, don't even finance it. That, that's just the kiss of death. But this is how you play the game. If you're going to buy something like that because you like it, it makes you happy. I like my Audi's a six speed. I like shifting those gears and you know, I like having fun and it's, and I've also put a little money into it. I've got an exhaust on it. I've lowered it, it hugs curves. It's, it's a sports car. It's very, very fun to drive. And I, I don't regret buying it. I love those experiences, but I lost 140 thousand dollars buying those cars and i'm still losing money they're in my garage right now but i'm still losing money because they're depreciating now i'm a little different than the average person because i own a business and i had an online course that i sold for five hundred thousand dollars so if you reduce the 140 from the 500 thousand that leaves 360,000 and I have other online courses that have done very well. So that loss in value was made up because I, I practice something that I like to call accelerated income. You know, life is to be enjoyed. Life is to be having fun. But until you're in the position where you can afford the car, afford the maintenance, do not buy a luxury car. You should be in a Honda, you should be in a Toyota, you should be in something that you preferably can pay cash for and don't have a car payment because car payments rob your economic ability for the future like you would not believe. Car payments suck up so much disposable cash and let's just go ahead and do the math. Like if, and also I pay cash for my BMW and my Audi. So at that time, when I dropped that money for the BMW, I was making close to a million a year. So even though I spent a lot of money getting that car, I was making a lot of money on this other side of the ledger. And this is how you gotta play the game because if you're gonna buy an appreciating asset, you need to have accelerated income and something appreciating over on the other side. 
And another part about buying luxury vehicles, your car should not be worth more than where you live. And this is something like to take the Dodge Hellcat. Uh, there was a guy on YouTube, he got him a Dodge Hellcat, he lives with his parents, his car is worth more than his parents' house. Now, why is that significant? Like, my cars, even when they were new, do not come close to the value of this house. The value of this house is $900,000. So even when they were new, they weren't close. And why would this part of the conversation matter? Because I can sell this house and get more money than I paid for it. Not in today's market. Let's just put that out there. At some point in the future, I can sell this house and get the money that I put into it out of it plus a return. You can't do that with a car. So you should never ever be in a situation where your car is worth more than the place that you live. And this is one of the things that many, many people do because they like new cars, the, the new car smell, they, they enjoy the whole ambience of having a new car, the look and the feel and how they drive. But if you can't pay cash for your new car, you shouldn't have a new car. This is one of my recommendations that you should be very, very careful with purchasing vehicles. I was in a position to buy those cars and take the financial hit. And because it's kind of like offense and defense in a football game, you can have a, like the Kansas City Chiefs. They don't really have, a, a, their defense got better, but because their offense was putting up so many points so quick, even though the other team was still scoring, they still won many games because they were able to have accelerated offense. So this is the same principles that you must employ when you're dealing with buying these cars or you're buying a car that's going to depreciate. You've got to have something on the other side of the ledger that's going to not only replace the income that you lost, but to make more income. And this is why you need investments. If you're in the position to spend $800 to $1,200 for a car payment, let's just take that same money and invest it in a rental property. Same money. You're going to come out much better with the rental property because you're going to be able to rent that property to someone and it's either going to make that whole payment or if you buy properly, you're going to have surplus cash flow on top of the money that you need to pay that house off. This is one of the worst mistakes that so many people buy. They go out and they get a luxury car and they're, they're not ready for it. And this is why many of the used luxury cars on the market are trashed because the person who bought the car wasn't able to upkeep the car in the manner that it needed to be upkeep. I would never buy a used Rolls Royce. I would never buy a used Bentley because unless this person was wealthy, there's going to be issues. There's going to be problems because they did not keep up the maintenance. And this is what you will see all over the place. This is why BMW has a bad reputation at times for reliability and Audi. And essentially someone got a used Audi or a used BMW and the recommended maintenance wasn't done because the person who bought that car couldn't afford to keep the car up. Like right now, my uh, BMW is in tip top shape. I've had all the recommended, recommended maintenance done and it drives and moves like a dream. And I'm gonna keep it literally to the wheels fall off of it because I really enjoy the car. And this is another reason that once you do get to the point where you can, be buying, where you can buy luxury cars, you should have income that is higher than the typical American. And this is where we get into the preachy and judgy stuff. If you are making $50,000 a year up to $100,000 a year, you have no business driving a luxury car because that luxury car is going to take a significant portion of your disposable income that you could be using for investing or saving. And this is something else too. On this channel, we recommend that you have two emergency funds and someone left a comment. Making $50,000 a year and having $30,000 in an emergency fund is unrealistic. 
And I, my reply to this person was, I know someone that made less money and had more money saved. How much money you have saved is not predicated on how much money you have you make. It's predicated on your financial behavior. And if you have bad financial behaviors, you can literally be a millionaire and be in a bad financial situation because you have reckless spending habits. Or you could be someone who makes $25,000 a year who understands where they are and this person practice saving a lot of their money. Visit my video, The 50% Solution. I met this girl when I was working in healthcare many years ago and she made less money than I did, but this girl had a paid off house in two cars that were paid off in cash. And the reason is she developed a ambitious saving habits when she was a teenager. So when she graduated high school, she had $50,000 in the bank because her father sat her down and said, you live with me and your mom, you need to save your money. And she got in the habit of saving money and she was operating on a cash basis. So she was able to pay cash for cars. She was able to pay cash for her house because, and she never made a lot of money. She never made like millions of dollars because she had me feeling some kind of way because I made probably $10 an hour more than she did, but she had way more cash in the bank. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't have any cash in the bank back then. I was an average American spending all of my money to live because I had a family and I was working two, three jobs. This, this meeting this girl, it, it just kind of threw me because I knew she made less money than I did, but she had all of this cash because she had good financial behavior. So it's not how much money you make, it's your financial behavior. And if you're out here buying luxury cars on the average income, that is bad financial behavior. And I want you to stop it. Promise me you're not gonna do that because I understand the BMWs are nice. I understand the Audis are nice. But until you're making 250 to $500,000 a year, those things are not for you. You should stay away from them unless you can save up cash and have your long-term emergency fund funded, your short-term emergency funded, no debt. Then you go out and drop that money at the dealership. And another thing you need to have is an additional source of accelerated income because even if you do all of that, the car is still going to depreciate. It's still going to lose value. Like I said, I've got $140,000 in represented lost value in my garage right now. And if I wasn't working on accelerated income, I would be so poor right now. I wouldn't be in this house. If I just went out and financed both those cars like a traditional American does, I would have lost. And this is one of the things with financing. You lose money on the interest and you lose money on the depreciation. So it would have been a double hit. I would have lost $140,000 plus whatever the interest would have been on those loans. So we're talking about $210,000 to $220,000 in lost economic value. That's a real number. Once again, this is why I say that you should start a business. You should start a, high, uh, a side business. This is why I'm about doing more, creating additional income so you can live the life that you want because this whole financing car stuff is for the birds and it's going to keep you poor. And there have been studies, many, many studies that have been done to show that financing cars delays or eliminates retirement. That's how much money you waste on financing cars. And you, you, should, you just shouldn't do it. You should not do it. So that is your message today. Hopefully it penetrates. Hopefully, you know, with this pandemic thing going on, hopefully if you're in a situation where you can sell that luxury car and get from under that note, do so because it is going to harm you economically for years. And let's, and this is something that many Americans do. They'll buy one car, finance it, pay it off, wait a year or two, go out and do it again. And they'll do this six, to 20 times in their lifetime. And each time they repeat the process, they lose money two ways, on the interest and the depreciation. So don't do it. Just don't, don't, don't do it. It's just not the way to go. 
All right, this is Savage Finance. Uh, I got some courses that I'm gonna link, start linking under these videos because for you, if you are an average American and you're making average income, you need to accelerate your income. I don't care if you love your job, you got a good job, you need to do more because what this pandemic real revealed is just how economically fragile that so many people are. Literally, there are people doing these stimulus update videos on YouTube talking about getting money from the government and they're getting record views and channels are literally exploding with growth because there are so many people who need money because they, they have no savings. They have no attitude money. They have no emergency fund. They have nothing. And I don't want that to be you. So pay attention to your hustling godfather and watch this next video that's right here. Watch it from the start to the finish. Watch it.